Uh, since launch, we've been in the belly compartment of Perseverance, so underneath the deck. Uh, and after we went through EDL, last, you know, since arriving on Mars, we've been staying there, getting charged periodically, uh, kept warm from, from the energy from Perseverance. Um, but we just completed uh, recently our deployment sequence where we've been unfolded, uh, our legs have been deployed, we went vertical. And very recently, we were just dropped onto the surface for the first time. And now we're on our own. We're, we're, we're a separate uh, spacecraft on Mars uh, on our own energy. Uh, and, and the team couldn't be happier. What was it like being, that? being dropped, right? That, that's one huge milestone. But the massive one for us uh, over the last two days has been realizing not only did we drop, um, but we actually survived the first night. That is huge. That, is, uh, that was one of the huge, huge achievements that we've been looking forward to. Uh, and now we can move on to the rest of the mission. But being able to drop uh, under our own energy, sustain ourselves, keep ourselves warm throughout the night, and then wake up and talk with perseverance and say, yep, we're here, we're alive and healthy, uh, the team couldn't be happier. Yeah, so the next step, really, the, today and tomorrow, really fully confirm this energy thermal model. And you know the whole uh, interview uh, has been about energy and thermal at the end of the day, mm -hmm. uh, because if we don't have enough energy, you know, we can't fly and we can't survive the night. So we're carefully taking uh, more temperature data, the battery state of charge, and really looking at the, the, the current you know, coming in from the solar panel and confirm. And we will use that information to actually optimize the time to fly the helicopter. We really want to fly it when the battery has charged up uh, mm -hmm. fully, and then we want to fly early enough so that after the flight we can charge again before the evening arrives to be ready to survive that long cold night. So we'll be doing that the next uh, two days, and then we will be ready to start turning our attention to the rotor system. And so the first thing we'll do in about three days is, uh, and three salts, I guess, Martian days, three salts. Uh, to, is to release the blades. The blades are being held right now with the blade pitch restraint. That's why they are now pointing straight north-south right now, and we will be ready to release them. And that takes uh, rotating the, the blades uh, in the same direction, okay. instead of counter-rotating, in the same direction just for a fraction of a cycle, and that will release the blades. Major deal, the blades have to be fully released, and then we will uh, check out, wiggle the blades the day after that, and do a very slow spin, 50 revolutions per minute. And that will confirm that our motor control, the servo controls are S the way we've designed it. And then lastly, still on the ground, we're going to do a full speed spin, approximately 2,400 revolutions per minute. Full speed spin to fully check out without taking off, check out the rotor performing. At that point, We'll be as ready as we can be, and we'll take one day to, again, fully charge the vehicle to maximize probability of success for that very, very first flight, the most important first flight, and then we go for the first flight.